All right, welcome back to another Solidity Smart Contract Vulnerability. And this one will be covering race conditions and front running. And now race conditions are a vulnerability that exists in you know, a number of programming languages. Uh, but it can be especially tricky when it comes to you know, Solidity Smart Contracts because of how the blockchain functions. Now, typically what a race condition is, is say that uh, you... One person performs a certain request, but it doesn't get processed yet, and another request comes through and kind of overwrites that one before the original one gets processed. That's kind of the layman's terms of of a race condition to me without really looking up. Maybe I can find a formal definition for you if that one was a little bit hard to follow, right? Where substantive behavior is dependent on the sequence or timing of uncontrollable events. Becomes a bug when one or more of the possible behaviors is undesirable. And that's what we'll see here. If if that technical definition didn't make sense to you and mine didn't, we'll be exploring it further here. You could also call this front running. That's another way you can look at it and you'll see why. So the combination of external calls to other contracts and the multi-user nature of the underlying blockchain gives rise to a variety of potential solidity pitfalls where users race code execution to obtain unexpected states. So re-entrancy is one such example of a race condition. Uh, in this section, we'll talk more generally about different kinds of race conditions that can occur on the Ethereum blockchain. So they have a, a number of articles here as well to check out, but uh, I'll just be sticking to this article on this one. So for the actual vulnerability, right? So Ethereum, the way it works is whenever you, you know, execute a contract on the network, um, you know, you're going to have to pay a gas fee, right? And uh, the processing of that transaction is a lot quicker than on the Bitcoin network, right? But uh, it still does take time for miners to process. Currently, Ethereum is proof of work. It will be going to proof of stake. But as we'll see later in this article, even the new implementation of the proof of stake could have some, you know, issues they got to iron out with race conditions. But with... Uh, the current way it works with proof of work, you know, it does take a quite a little bit of time for a miner to process the transaction, and it is possible to front run, uh, in many cases, a lot of these contracts if they were not coded in a way that would prevent this, and we'll go into that, of course. So, um, it can be, the race condition can be performed by another user if, there's, if the contract's vulnerable, or uh, by, an, by a miner as well. So, typically, so the transaction only considered valid once a miner has solved the consensus mechanism, obviously, right? That's how it works. Uh, so, the miner who solves the block also chooses which transactions from the pool will be included in the block. This is typically ordered by the gas price of the transaction. Now, that is the key part here. So, if you ever used, um, I don't know, any kind of DEX, any kind of decentralized exchange before, or, you know, a lot of different... Uh, Ethereum applications, ERC-20 based applications out there, what you'll see is that when you pay the gas fee, you typically have different options of, do you want to go with the minimum gas fee you know, for the slow, right? The normal for a medium, or do you want to put in a little bit of extra money into the gas fee to get faster processing time? So this vulnerability a lot of times has to do with, at least for the user exploiting it, uh, if a user exploits the vulnerability, a lot of times it will be, say that someone submits a, uh, here, here's the example, right? There's a find this hash contract, right? And you just gotta, you gotta guess the, uh, the word associated with this hash. And, uh, you know, you can find the pre-hash image. If you can find the pre-hash image, you'll receive a thousand ether. And this is one such example, right? So what you could do as an attacker, and they talk about this, is you could just watch the blockchain, because remember, the blockchain is public. Um, the Ethereum blockchain is, right? You could just watch the uh, the chain to see someone submit the solution to this contract. And if they did, like, say, like, the minimum gas fee or, like, a medium gas fee, you can literally see what their solution was, verify it yourself, and then go ahead and submit the solution to this challenge by calling this solve function and passing in the answer as the solution parameter here. And if you 
you know, ball out for the maximum gas fee, you might, your contract or your transaction might get processed on the blockchain before the original guys did because he did like the normal or the slow speed gas fee, right? You're putting in a ton, so you're going to get prioritized because remember, as they say here, the gas price determines what gets priority uh, as far as processing transactions on the blockchain. So you could actually front run him, right? And you'll take, you'll get the 1000 ether payout in this case. And by the time the original guy who actually had the original solution, by the time his block gets processed, all the ether will be taken out of the contract already. So even though he had the solution before you, you front ran him and, and he got rugged basically, right? But uh, yeah, now is where they go on to say that uh, the future design of the Casper implementation, which is where Ethereum will be going from proof of stake to proof of work, uh, that involves slashing contracts um, when they notice that uh, validators double vote or misbehave, right? So they're trying to incentivize them to play by the rules, essentially, right? So they can submit proof that this occurred. They'll be punished and the user rewarded. But in this scenario, it's expected that miners and users will front run all such submissions of proof. Because you got to remember, if you provide proof, you can actually front run the proof right? And the issue must be addressed before final release. Now, I know this article is a little bit old. They might have already solved this problem in the implementation. And, and as we kind of move forward with Ethereum, and it's really in the early phases of transitioning to proof of work, this may very well already be fixed. If any of you guys know if they fix this problem, let me know in the comment section below. I'd be very interested in, in hearing about that because I do not actually know currently where it stands but uh, yeah as far as actually preventing this right if you're trying to prevent users from front running and miners it's done a little bit it can be done a little bit different right so if it's vulnerable to the user case that that i talked about in that example then uh you can do so by uh implementing a uh, a maximum gas fee that's one thing that you could do like uh, have an upper bound on it Right, but this won't do anything to actually prevent the case where the miners are the ones doing the race condition, because um, it, it talks about it here as as to why. Because the miners, uh, th they can order the transactions in their block however they like, regardless of the gas price. But typically, they don't worry as much about the miners doing that because it relies on a lot of really random events things aligning for them to be able to do that. Like they have to know that like, they're going to be the first one to mine that block, you know, on the entire Ethereum network, which the Ethereum network is massive. There's so many nodes on it. And so it's really kind of impractical in a lot of cases, I think for the miners to actually be pulling off this attack. So we really want to concern ourselves mostly with, uh, with the users in this, in the case of a contract like that. But the, the better method, it sounds like, at least at the time of this article, is to use the commit reveal scheme uh, whenever possible, right? So it dictates that users send transactions with hidden information, typically a hash, right? To, I mean, that's what hashing was initially. The purpose behind it was for is to verify the integrity, right? So uh, after the transaction has been included in a block, the user sends a transaction revealing the data that was sent the reveal phrase, right? So this method prevents both miners and users from front running transactions as they cannot determine the contents of the transaction, right? So another thing to note though is the method will not conceal the transaction value, which in some cases that could be valuable information just depending on what the contract is. Now, there is some interesting real world cases of this happening, right? Particularly ERC-20 and Bancor. And there's a lot of articles and things on this. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of just explaining what I was talking about earlier of uh, the front-running stuff here. And, uh, yeah, interesting article here, uh, this blog post about uh, how the Bancor guys identified this as being an issue, uh, front-running uh, on their trading platform and uh, how they went about preventing it. So maybe an article you want to check out. I'll throw that in the uh, the description below for any of you guys who want to check that one out. 
And yeah, hopefully you guys got a value from this. Let me know if there's any questions or comments down in the section below. And if you want to catch up on this playlist and check out some of the other Solidity smart contract vulnerabilities, go ahead and check out the videos on screen right now. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.